Hello, my name is Dmitry, and today we are finishing setting up our full stack application. Let's remember what we did last time. We successfully described models of our database, connected it to our backend services, generated GraphQL schema, and successfully created user which passes auto-generated validation. Last time, we put our generated classes based on database schema under shared folder. I thought it would be a good idea to share it with the front end, but I was wrong. It's better to duplicate your code than mix the mains. Let's remove that shared folder. So an XGRM shared folder force remove because it's still dependent on API folder on API project. When it's removed, let's generate new library under API generated with name DB types with scope API. So only API application could import it. We have a bunch of generated stuff. We actually don't need it. Let's generate our types. And remove unneeded stuff. Let's fix our imports in the resolver folder. We don't have it here anymore. So let's remove it from appropriate source. Let's check if we still able to run our API. No, we still have some dependencies in some files. In service file. Let's remove those and import correct ones. Let's run it again. And yep, we good. Let's add Narval next package and generate next application. With name web. We will use CSS. We successfully generated our front-end application with uh, some dummy hello page. To run it all together, we can install package name concurrently. Let's add script to run our web application. The web the API and run script that will run it all together, which is start dev. And let's stop our API and start it all together. And on our local host, we can see our hello web page. Now we should install our GraphQL frontend client. I'll choose Oracle. Also, we should install a bunch of code generation packages to be able to generate our GraphQL hooks while installing packages. We should create GraphQL code gen UML with a configuration for our code generator. As you can see, the, everything that ends with gql.ts will be parsed and based on that, we will generate our GraphQL hooks. We will see it in a minute. Let's add utils section. By this command, we will be able to generate our Oracle hooks. Now let's create our query. Let's create API directory under our web project with the user folder. We 
where we will create our user.gql.ts. Create actual query. Get user gql from Euroco. It will be query get user user with the args user where unique input with a dollar sign and user where dollar args name and email so now we should create library with the client related types so client generated graphql types with tag scope client we have our library in place and now let's run our graphql code generation so it already generated some hooks let's check it out so we have our use get user query let's add command to be able to run our db client so we have one user in our database already with id one email test test and name dmitry and with test password let's try to get this user in index test we can add our use get user query with variables we can check what we got we have arguments and user where unique input and let's check what we got I guess we will have course error at the moment not found fair enough we should actually add our Oracle client provider let's create an API provider with the client API which pointed to our GraphQL server let's add our with API higher order function to our index page now it should work with our API and we have in course error let's enable course to enable course you should do the following up enable course origin true so it means you can receive requests from any origin but for real server you should specify the exact origins also would be good to have helmet installed and pmi helmet helmet helps you to secure your application it's not a silver bullet but it helps it also blocks you from using playground so this development content security policy exactly fixing this issue let's see if we able to get our user so now in the console we have an our user let's render it out let's make it greet ourselves so while fetching let's say there but when we're done let's get user name so 
as you can see in here already, it understood that data is type of get user query where we can get our user with, with fields, name and email and name could be optional. So let's cover it with the optional chain. Let's see what we got. Now it says, hello, Dmitry. So let's go over everything we done so far. We have database schema. Where we got our user in place covered with validation. Based on that model, we have in our user class and user inputs. For example, user where unique input. So when we creating one user, we have an end data, which is user created unique input. And we have everything that we need to create our user covered with validation. We have our user resolver where we have this create user mutation based on those decoration and types we have in our GraphQL generated schema where we have, have our mutation which is create user with data create user input which returns user based on those types which specified in GraphQL schema we able to generate our Oracle hooks which is which we will use in our web application right in here we specify some query which generates our hooks we even not exporting this query so we can't reach it from our application but what we can reach is our use get user query which we will which we use in our index file which is our home page and here we have our type get user query where everything already defined that what you should pass as variable it is user where unique input and also what we will get as response that is get user query which is covered with types isn't it perfect full stack application i don't know <laughs> but it uh, seems nice we should do one more important thing let's go over the next documentation and find out what scopes really are so as you see you can define some dependency constraints let's actually check out what our dependencies are an x graph let's check all our projects so now we're fine and dandy we have our api which dependent on uh, that access library and some generated types. We have our web application, which is dependent on our only client generated types, but we can easily mess it up. Let's go to the our client library. And inside types we can have our mutation remove user arguments and let's just import it to our api resolver application resources resolver and i don't know just just put it here like new type type a equals mutation so as you see we now are dependent on our full stack client library so let's check out our graph one more time so now our api explicitly dependent on our 
client-generated GraphQL types, which is not really what we want to achieve in our full stack application. We want our uh, application and libraries be as independent as it possible. And we never want to mix up our domains. Web should be dependent on some shared or web applications and libraries, and API should be dependent on only our API libraries. How we can achieve that? By actually setting up those constraints. Let's copy and force our model boundaries. Go to our ESLint, find out where it is, and let's replace it with our scopes. We have shared with which can import shared. We have API, could import shared and API client, could import shared and client. Now I should reboot my ESLint, I guess. Disable API and enable it back. And now I have an error here. So project tagged with scope API can only be dependent on libs tagged with shared or API. So now we should remove that and we are saved. That's it for this part. In next part, we may add authentication, more business logic to it, stricter ESLint rules and server-side render. If you like it, hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.